Katie Heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. Welcome to another episode of Reviewing Supermarket Teas. In this series of videos, I blind taste teas which have been sent to me kindly by tea heads from around the world, purchased from their local supermarket. I blind taste them, I know nothing about them. I want to figure out what they are, I want to figure out their price point, and I rate the teas from zero poison all the way to 10 pinnacle tea. A 10 means that the tea is good enough to be selected as a May leaf tea. We never expect supermarkets to match specialty tea sellers because their buyers have a whole different set of pressures that they need to uh, follow when selecting their teas. But what we're trying to do with these videos is just highlight the fact that supermarkets need to step up and the consumers deserve higher quality teas on the shelf. These teas have been sent to us by Steve, don't have a surname, Steve from Massachusetts in the US, and these teas come from Wegman. I think it's Wegman. The Swiss German in me wants to say Wegman, but I'm gonna resist that and say Wegman. Wegman, uh, I hope it's a supermarket. You can only select teas from a supermarket. If you're thinking of sending us some teas, then please make sure that they come from a supermarket. Any shop that sells all sorts of things like from cat food to toilet paper, that's what I always use, but also obviously food and drink. I'm just gonna warm up my guy one here. We're doing simple style brewing, guy one to cup. Right, we've got four here, let's dive in. Okay, well, you know, it is what it is. Dragon Pearl Jasmine. Um, right, so let's, while we're on the subject, because I've never done a video about Dragon Pearl Jasmine, we sell Dragon Pearl Jasmine, generally considered to be the highest level of jasmine or one of the higher echelon jasmine teas. The reason why it's rolled up is not simply for aesthetics, although of course that helps, but also because when you roll up the tea leaves that have been scented with jasmine, the idea is you're gonna lock in that jasmine aroma for longer so it stays very potent in terms of its jasmine jammy aroma for longer. The look of these looked pretty good. You want to see a fair amount of white. That's always one of the sort of classic quality markers. A lot of the, the furry buds here. So these are very, very furry buds. You can see how white it is. The size of the, the pearls also is generally a quality marker. Smaller is better. So if you're looking for dragon pearl jasmine, you want to look for smaller, uh, pearls with a fair amount of white buds. Um, and you know, these look pretty good, I have to say, pretty good. Okay, let's have a smell. Smell is all right. It's got a jammy note to it, which I look for with my jasmine. So you wanna have that sort of strawberry jam aroma. Sweet, but it does have also a little bit of a old, I wanna say, you know when a public toilet has been disinfected and cleaned? It's got sort of a, like a, a toilet cleaner aroma as well. Just underneath, and I'm, I'm not sure if, oh yeah, yeah. A public toilet that's not been cleaned particularly well. So there's just sort of this remnant smell of, um, I'm gonna say it, there's a sort of remnant smell of urine there it's not actually, the first whiff was nice, but I'm less enthusiastic now. Let's give this a quick rinse. Uh, does Froggy deserve this? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna err on the side of caution and save the frog from this tea. Okay, that's that public toilet aroma has gone. I don't know where they stored this tea. Now I'm just getting a straight ahead jasmine aroma. Yep, nice, little bit jammy. Still something, something funky in it. Something sort of chemically about it, a little sort of chemical cleaner smell. I'm not saying that that is because it's been sprayed or anything like that because it could just be the natural sort of degradation of the aromatics of the tea, but not particularly loving that aroma. We brewed this with, oh, I didn't check the water. Okay, 88, so it's a little bit, a little bit on the hot side, but it should be able to handle it. 
When these open up, you'll probably see that they are pretty much just a bud and a long stem, maybe some leaves. That's usually the way that it works. It's a lot of stem in these dragon pearls, but it generally is a decent quality tea. What is that smell? Hmm. Hmm, like a sort of, a little bit of a, a, a rancid nuts or something. Okay, let's give this a taste. Ooh, no, no, weak, very, very weak. Considering I brewed that with hotter than normal green tea temperature by a few degrees, and I put a fair amount of leaf in, as you can see, Weak flavor, very, very flat. Hardly any tea flavor, and the tea flavor that I'm getting is again this sort of storage taste. I can't put it better than that, like a sort of stale taste to it. There is jasmine, of course, but it tastes like just sort of water with a, a few drops of jasmine aroma. Mm. This is definitely scented with real jasmines. You can tell when it's been scented with just jasmine essential. This has been scented with real jasmines, but I feel like it's been left for a while. I wonder if they've included season information here to give me when it was picked, but I don't think it was very recently. Considering it's a dragon pearl, you'd expect the aromatics of jasmine to be very, very rich, very, very heady. It's not the case here. I'm gonna be kind and give it one more infusion dry, definitely dry. There's something that's not sitting very well with me in this tea, just a, a feeling, furry mouth, dry, mm, just, a, just a weak jasmine aroma. Yeah, the tea taste is coming out now, but it's not nice. It's just bitter, a bitter green tea. Ah, no, not nice. You can see the pickings. You get a little guy one lid here. Don't look too bad, you know? You look at these pickings and you'd think, yeah, all right, but in one leaf, looks decent, the picking. And as I said, the balls themselves, on first glance looked pretty good. Sort of small-ish and having a lot of that white fluff. Although those markers are just sort of general pointers. You don't necessarily, well, in this case, it proves it. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a good or bad tea if it has those white buds or not. Stony, mineral, dry, little bit of weak tea taste, bitter, and the jasmine is there, but it's not very, it's very sort of flat, old tasting. And there's just this feeling that I get in my stomach, which makes me just little alarm bells going off. I don't really want to drink more of this tea. A sort of queasy feeling. It makes me think that it's um, maybe been sprayed and that bitterness is very, very persistent. So you can hear by my voice, it's like, it's, it's stopping me from speaking. It's sucking up all of the saliva in my mouth. Not nice, I have to say. Sorry, Steve, I, I don't know if you like these teas or not, but not particularly a high quality Dragon Pearl Jasmine, despite its looks. This is a Chinese Dragon Pearl Jasmine tea. I would guess it's from Fujian province. Um, picking, you can see, bud and one or two leaves. Don't know the elevation. Um, price point is, uh, I'm gonna say around 12, 30. I mean, you know, with jasmine tea, there's a fair amount of labor, so it could be up to like 15 um, cents per gram. Um, score on this, wow. You can call it tea. You can definitely call it tea. Judging by the, the sensation that it's giving me, I wouldn't even put this in meh. I'm afraid, Steve, that this gets a low score from me. I'm giving this a 3.5. You can call it tea. I wouldn't 
want to drink much of this tea. In fact, I think I've had my fill. There's a feeling inside which I'm not liking at the moment, a queasy sort of feeling. Mm. Right, let's see what this is, shall we? Okay, so it's an organic jasmine pearl. We've done videos about organic and what that means, so check that out. Um, does not necessarily mean higher quality. Oftentimes it means the opposite, but things are changing, thankfully. Organic jasmine pearls, 17 cents per gram, so there or thereabouts. Origin, all we know it's from China, although Celine question marked it, maybe she figured it out later, it looks like a different pen. Um, organic jasmine pearls, my guess is the tea's organic. I'm gonna make the guess that those flowers are not organic. Now one thing about flowers is because of the fact that they're obviously petals, insects really get into those flowers and they can stay in those flowers for a very, very long time and oftentimes with flower teas. That's the tea which is the hardest to produce without spraying with pesticides because of the fact that consumers are very squeamish about seeing a little fly or a little insect in there. Now, the, the flowers have been taken out here, so there shouldn't be any issue with that. And I would certainly prefer it to be organic and for, you know, insects to, small insects to be in the flowers while they're doing the scenting and then they're removing them rather than, than the producer spraying the flowers. But my guess from the feeling that I have is that those flowers are not organic. I may be wrong, but that's my guess. So a 3.5, not a great start. Let's hope for bigger and better things with tea number two. Yeah, I really, really don't feel very good, I have to say. <laughs> Does not leave me with a good feeling, that one. Okay, so now we've got a green oolong. Um, let me crank the temperature up here. Get it up to about 95 degrees. Yeah, green oolong tea. I'll put it in the cup first so you can see. This looks like a Tieguan Yin, Chinese Tieguan Yin. Could be Taiwanese, but judging by the roll, the way that it's rolled is rougher. I would say that that is a Tieguan Yin or green oolong from Fujian province in China. Let's give this guy one a little heat up. So we're high temperature now. And in go these leaves. Not messing around here. Let's have a smell of Wegmans Tieguan Yin. Well, <laughs> very little smell. Anybody who knows Tieguan Yin would know that you're expecting when it hits that hot guy one or hot pot for it to just blow up with fragrant bouquet of aromas. That's the joy of a good fresh Tieguan Yin. This is certainly not fresh. This is old. It's got a slight apricot, yogurt, sourness to it, which is nice, pleasant in the background. A little bit of a, I wanna say sort of carameled toffee apples, but everything is very, very much in the distance. You have to go searching with your nose. Yeah, brown butter, caramelized toffee apples, and apricot yogurt all sound delicious, but it's all dialed down. It's very, very far in the distance, but it's there. It probably was a half decent tea maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, we didn't see the season in the last one, so I'm guessing that Wegmans don't announce when the tea was picked, and that's fundamental, especially with green Oolongs, well, you know what? Frog gets this one. I think that this is going to be at least a half decent tea. Okay, smell of the wet leaves. Wet leaves are opening up super quickly, which means that the rolling is not particularly tight. It didn't like hold together. You can see how quickly that was just a quick rinse. That's opening up. Not a good sign. Smell is okay. Smell is okay. Again, peach, yogurt. A little bit of sort of icing sugar, sort of cake frosting icing sugar. All pretty good, but you would expect that from a Tieguan Yin. Tieguan Yins are designed for fragrance, especially these more modern Qingxiang high aroma Tieguan Yins. 
Normally I'd be hitting that with direct heat, but because the leaves have opened up so quickly, I mean, that's quite crazy how quickly they opened up. Um, I'm doing some rim brewing there. I want to brew this relatively strong because I have a feeling that this is going to be all aroma and not much taste. So I just want to try and get more of a strong brew out of it. Here we go. I want to take a look at those leaves again. Yeah. You see how sort of thin they are? They've opened up so quickly because they're so thin, they rehydrate so quickly. Um, there's a sort of brittle thinness about them which does not bode well. Uh, slightly overfilled this cup. Cheers, everybody. Oh. Oh, no. Old, badly stored tea. You want to see the color? Yeah, a little bit muted for a green tea guan yin, and it just tastes, it tastes old. It tastes like it's, um, either this is badly stored tea or it's old tea. Um, I'm not saying that the quality of the tea at the beginning was great, but it could have been better because there is some fresh fruitiness, like, um, like we have a tea called Sip Spring, and it has that sort of spring, um, sort of, uh, yeah, plain yogurts and a little bit of uh, um, a little bit of coconut water in there. It's there, but it's so dialed down, leaving a very dry, dry mouth feel. Sour now. Now that the leaf material has brewed out of it a little bit. So the leaf material is not great quality because I'm getting a real distinct, unpleasant tang, unpleasant dryness. Yeah, no, 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 no. The first infusion was even better and that was underwhelming. Now you just don't want to, it's not worth reinfusing, that's for sure. Um, the aromatics were the best thing out of it. Yeah, sour, poor, poor quality leaves, badly stored. That was all about sniffing the aroma. If, if the tea buyer had actually tasted that tea and actually enjoyed that tea, then we've got problems. Because what really probably happened here is they gave it one brew, smelt it, and it, oh, it's quite a nice fruity, tangy aroma. I like it. And they probably tasted the first couple of sips and went, yep, that's fine. Because you would not select this tea if you um, tasted the second infusion. Mm. Really sour. And when I mean sour, there's this thing with tea. You can have like um, freshness and you can have tang, but there's this sort of thing that you get with with low quality teas, this sort of, um, like somebody's taken lemon juice or like um, the fake lemon juice, you know, the ones in the plastic lemons and just taken their fingers and just rubbed it on the sides of your tongue. It's sort of like this slightly sort of chemical sourness. And I'm not saying it's chemicals, but this, this sourness that's really, really um, prevalent in low quality teas. So this is a, oh, no, this is a Tie Guan Yin from China, old. I doubt that they're gonna give um, any information about when it was picked. Uh, price point on it, oh God, I don't know. Um, 12 cents a gram. Um, score, wow. You know what, you can just about call this tea. I'm gonna give this a 3.1. And the reason I'm being hard on it is because, you know, something winds me up about teas that are masquerading as high quality teas, which I know that there's some unbelievable pinnacle teas of this ilk out there. And this is a sort of, it's just the fakeness of it that winds me up um, and producers need to stop making teas of this kind. So that's a 3.1. Let's see what this is from Wegmans. This is not a good start, Steve. We had a what did we have, a 3.5 and a 3.1?
hopefully the only way is up from there. Uh, okay, so they call it a jade oolong, nine cents per gram from China. Yep, yep, yep. No information, badly stored tea, poor quality tea, not particularly happy. My stomach is not feeling any better. Let's hope that number three can put me in a little bit of a better mood. Okay, heating up this guy one. And let's see what we've got is number three. What? Okay, number two and number three look pretty similar. Let me just uh, show you. Can you see those? Number two and number three look almost identical. In fact, they look identical. So we've got another oolong here. I hope that there's not been a mistake here. Um, let's see. We'll know by the taste. It looks a little bit darker. Looks darker. Yeah, okay. So it is, a, yeah, it is a different oolong. Uh, let me show you the dry leaf of the other one. So you can see that one is a bit lighter. That one is darker. Let's heat this up. So it's another um, Chinese oolong, I'm going to guess. I don't think that this is from uh, Taiwan, judging by the size of the balls and the shape of them. Let's uh, give it a smell. Definitely darker. Oh, this smells not bad. Okay, so now, yeah, feeling a little bit happier here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got a little bit of guava. A bit more tropical. It's got a bit more of a, a I don't know if it's been roasted. It smells like it might be roasted, but it's got a lovely tropical fruit note happening, like a, a guava, pineapple, and it's all very much sitting in the smell. It's not sort of this vaporous smell that, that you feel is gonna dissipate when you hit it with hot water. It feels like it's locked into the tea. This could be a big step up. Judging by the smell, Froggy definitely gets some of this one. Let's see if the wet leaf smell lives up to the dry leaf. Mmm, little bit underwhelmed. It's still there. I still have custard apples, guavas, bananas, pineapples. But then, over the top of it is a sort of vague, stale smell. Like a little bit um, cellar-like, a little bit mushroomy. I'm not going to say moldy, but you know, a little bit like freshly cut button mushrooms. Not necessarily an unpleasant smell, but not something I would expect to find in a Tie Guan Yin. Look at the difference in the fact that these balls have not opened up so quickly compared to the first one, right? That says to me that this is a higher quality tea. Um, I'm seeing different shades of green here, which means it's been processed a little bit unevenly. Um, but overall, this looks like higher quality tea. It smells like high quality tea. It's got a creamy note to it. It's like creamy tropical fruits. A little bit of that mushroomy note, which I'm not particularly happy about, but you know, it's, it's all right. It's not necessarily unpleasant. Let's see how that expresses itself in the taste. Definitely gonna be the best quality tea we've had so far. And hopefully number four is just gonna bring it to the next level. Okay, let's pour this into our porcelain cup. I'll give you a little look of the color. Again, a little bit um, more on the orange side, but if it's a more oxidized tea, which it looks like this is a bit more of an oxidized tea, then that would be fine. Again, you can see 
that the leaves are definitely higher quality. You can see also the unevenness. You can see the, the over oxidized leaves here mixed with very, very sort of light leaves. So it's not, there's not been a lot of love in the processing, but it's higher quality. Right, let's give this a taste. Yeah, texture is thicker. The immediate taste that I get is of a more traditional, slightly more oxidized Tie Guan Yin. I'm getting apricots, getting apricot yogurt, getting a little slight cannabis tang to it. Nice, nice. Instantly reinfusing, that's a good sign. No, this is fine, this is fine. This is a decent, decent Tie Guan Yin. In fact, more unusual, I would say, to find a traditional style Tie Guan Yin. Now, the traditional style means that it's been roasted, uh, not roasted, means that it's been oxidized for um, a little bit more than your average modern style Tie Guan Yin. That oxidation could be by accident. In other words, they were trying to produce a higher quality Tie Guan Yin, but it was sort of done in a little bit of an inefficient um, and haphazard way, and so the leaves oxidized. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that this was an intentional, more traditional style Tie Guan Yin. Nothing, you know, amazing, but it has got that apricot, dried apricots, yogurt, aftertaste. It's not particularly, um, rich in terms of strong in terms of aftertaste, but it's there, it's a little bit weak, it's dry, it's making my mouth furry. Second infusion is less, I'm less enthusiastic. What I'm learning with these Wegmans teas is the first infusion is your high point. Second infusion is you just don't wanna go there. Um, much drier, I'm getting a little bit of that sourness I'm talking about, nothing like the first uh, uh, Tie Guan Yin or Jade Oolong, as they called it. Yeah, a bit muddy. I'm getting that mushroomy note coming through. Dry. But the saving grace is that the aftertaste has got that guava, guava note coming through. Yeah, not bad. So this is a traditional style Tie Guan Yin. That's what I'm going for. Um, this is from China, most probably from Fujian province. Price point on this, I would say, is a bit higher. I would go at around uh, 15 cents per gram. Um, score on this, um, it's worth reinfusing, but only just considering the, the quality of that second infusion. I'm going to give this a straight ahead 5.0, right smack bang in the middle of our scale. This tea is right there, five points, a lot better. Oh, nice aroma on the wet leaves. A little bit fresher. It's got a little spring flower note happening in there. You know, this is a decent, decent tea, worth reinfusing, but I certainly wouldn't really be drinking more than two or three infusions out of it. Tie Guan Yin from China. Right, let's see what this is. Yeah, Tie Guan Yin from China, 12 cents a gram. Not a bad price, actually, for this tea. Um, decent, decent, you know, buyable, but only just. 12 cents per gram, Tie Guan Yin. So they call this one a Tie Guan Yin and they call the other one a Jade Oolong. Actually, fairly accurate because this would be the traditional Tie Guan Yin and the other one is more of a high aroma Qing Xiang Tie Guan Yin, even though it wasn't anywhere near justifying that name. This is a traditional Tie Guan Yin. Um, again, scope is... Um, very, very much missing information. Okay, let's move on to tea number four. All right, so Wegmans is on a knife edge now. We had a 3.5, a 3.1, and a five. So lower scale teas. Are we gonna tip over to above a five? Is Wegmans gonna redeem itself or is it gonna have the uh, very unwanted title of one of our lower scoring supermarket teas? This is not a good start, people. We have got 
a Dragon Well green tea here, but the quality looks pretty bad, if you ask me. Very, very large. Let's take a look at these. Let's take a look at these leaves, shall we? Let's assess these leaves together. Very, very uneven, very, very broken up. And when you can see a full leaf, they are big leaves. This is very, very much sort of coarse picking. And then the color, look at that black color here. A, a, a dragon well or a long jing should never be that color. <laughs> Should never be that color. That's like a black tea color. Um, a few stems in there, not necessarily a problem, but really looks old, looks bad picking, broken up, unloved, uncared for. It makes me very, very sad to see tea like this, especially considering that no doubt this is being sold as a premium loose leaf tea. All right. Judging by looks, not excited. Let's smell. Oof. Vaguely nutty, vaguely caramel, but again, old, storage bad, stale. Um, it should not have this taste note, this sort of a milk chocolate biscuit note, which some people would go, ooh, that sounds nice. But no, it shouldn't, it shouldn't have that. It should not have this sort of, Milk chocolate and fudge note should not be a Dragon Well green tea. And if it tastes like that, then whoa, this is some crazy um, Dragon Well. But my suspicion is that that's just the smell of a very, very old, old tea. This is an aged, let's call it an aged Dragon Well. Let's try to, uh, I don't know, let's try to redefine it into something good. But Froggy is not getting any of this. Okay, smell of the wet leaf. Yeah, persists. It's got this, okay, so I'm getting some of that roasted bean aroma that you are looking for in a Longjing tea. But there's a, there's a sort of sweet, you know, I've said this before that green teas, when they age, they tend to have a Sakura cherry blossom smell. This has gone beyond that. This has gone beyond the Sakura and is now moved into sort of milk chocolate. And again, I'm not saying that as a compliment because it should not have that aroma. A little bit of a sweaty feet smell, a little bit of a sort of soggy cardboard aroma. I mean, the best thing to say about it is it's got a sort of chocolatey smell, but a very light milk chocolate and um, I'm not particularly excited to taste this, but if that chocolate aroma translates into the cup, then well, maybe we've discovered a new way of <laughs> sort of a, a presenting Dragon Well. Age it for a few years in poor storage and this is the result. I'm gonna give it a good brew. We'll see the color as well. I'm brewing direct into my Lotus Ruyao cup. You know, it's getting a bit more green here, you can see. Starting to show what it used to be, its former self, after all of those, no doubt, years sitting in poor storage. Color of the liquor actually looks surprisingly light and clear. Okay, here we go. Mm. Chocolate's not there. Did not translate. That is just a storage aroma. Taste. Okay. Start with the with the positives. It's not unpleasant. It's got that roasted bean um, flavor very much in the background. But bitter, definitely much more bitter than you'd want. And I brewed this at 80 
two degrees water, so it should not be bitter. Oh, very bitter. I'm dreading the second infusion because I've learned from Wegmans that the only way is down regarding infusions, but I will infuse it again. Again, queasy feeling here. Getting a weird queasy feeling here. I'm not sure if this is an organic tea, but just a, not a nice feeling in my stomach. Dry, furry, bitter. Just sucking all of the moisture out of my mouth. My stomach is not feeling good. My stomach is rejecting. It's like, what are you drinking? Um, again, apologies to Steve if you know he enjoys these teas. As I always say, if you love the teas, if you like the teas, then keep drinking them. This is just the opinion of one person. We are all students of the leaf and we all have our own interpretations. Second infusion of this Dragonwell tea. The smell, the chocolate aroma has gone. It was a storage aroma. It's not nothing that was really sort of, um, you know, intrinsic or embedded in the leaf. It wasn't about the compounds in the leaf changing. It was just, maybe it was stored <laughs> with um, chocolate in the storehouse. Um, it smells all right. It smells sort of like, you know, old green tea. Mm. Mm. Okay, so Wegmans never drink the second infusion ever. This tastes like flint and water. It just tastes like stony water. All of the roasted bean aroma has dissipated. This tastes like the 10th infusion. And that's being kind. There is nothing redeeming about this tea. It's dry, it's furry, it gives me no sweetness. It gives me just a stony mineral taste. I guess the only thing that you can say is it doesn't taste bad. It doesn't give you, there's nothing offensive in the taste, but again, these kinds of teas annoy me so much because they're sort of these faux premium masquerading. I prefer to drink something which is not pretending to be a high quality tea and just say, well, this is, you know, not pretending to be anything special and it's just bad. This is bad, but it's pretending to be good. This is faux premium to the absolute highest level. It's just, just the lowest quality Dragonwell green tea. I don't know where it'd be coming from. It's probably from Zhejiang province, but it's just like fifth flush, maybe picked in sort of <laughs> end of May, large leaf, broken up, stored badly for many years, and was not good at the beginning, and has certainly not benefited from the storage near some chocolate, perhaps. Um, so this is a Dragon Well green tea. This is, I don't know, with prices like this, you just don't know if they're gonna be marking it up according to the fact that it's a, it's a Dragon Well tea, which is a famous Chinese green tea. Let's say, again, 12 cents per gram score on this. As you can tell, I'm not, I, this, these kinds of teas just annoy me. I'm gonna give this a 3.1, which it may surprise people because they'd be like, well, you know, hey, it's a Dragon Well green tea. Don't be so hard on it, but it's the masquerading of this is a quality tea that just annoys me, winds me up, and that's downgrading the score. 3.1 for a Dragon Well green tea. Let's see what this is. Again, queasy feeling, queasy feeling with these teas, with the first one and this one, something not quite right about it. And again, it's an organic tea, organic Dragon Well tea, uh, very accurate, 9.5 cents per gram from China, no information. Again, organic tea, interesting that two organic teas made me feel like they were the absolute opposite of organic. You know, I, I've said it many times, but I, I think that you've got to be very, very careful um, when buying organic teas. There's something about the pressures to um, take 
lower quality fields and try to up their value by turning them into organic fields. It might be that these fields are organic, but potentially close to industrial areas or something like that. It just doesn't sit right. It doesn't taste right to me um, and it doesn't feel right in my stomach. So what do we have? We had a 3.5, 3.1, a 5 and a 3.1. I think I'm right in saying that that's the lowest scoring supermarket T range that we've ever reviewed up to this point here. Steve, thank you so much for sending them in. Again, if you enjoy them, please continue to enjoy them. Um, I think that Wegmans can do a lot, lot better. I hope that you know someone from Wegmans sees this video and whilst they may be cursing at the screen saying, who is this person, this, this guy, what does he know? You know, fair enough, you can get angry with me, but look deep into yourselves and I think you'll know that your teas are substandard and the consumer definitely deserves better. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, Taste Our Teas, wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from the tea bags and the poor quality faux premium tea. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.